Are you thinking about calling Niceville, Florida home? Well, in today's video, we're going to go over to the computer and show you everything about Niceville from a bird's eye view, as well as show you some of the details of the actual city itself. We're going to go over the different neighborhoods, different things to do, golf courses, um, where the water is, what type of water, just everything about Niceville. So let's grab our coffee, go straight to the computer and get into it. All right. Let's do this. We've got the map pulled up here. Let's jump right into it. The first things first, we want to kind of get our bearings here. So when we're talking about Niceville, we are talking about everything here. Let me see if I can pull up. This is the first time I'll be using this uh, these pens and stuff here. So bear with me. This is supposed to be a vanishing pen. This is basically Niceville right here. So everything that I just sort of highlighted, it kind of goes something like this all the way down to Blue Water Bay. And then up here, and this is sort of, um, and we'll talk about each little subsection and everything like that. So the first thing we want to talk about is Highway 20 that runs right down the center of all of Niceville. So it comes right outside of the back gate of Eglin Air Force Base, which is right over here. Um, I know it says it's like right down here, but it kind of starts, um, I guess it's like this whole area here. Um, so right out the back gate enters into Valparaiso and then Highway 20 starts at about right here and then moves its way down. I'm just having too much fun with this uh, with this thing now at this point. So um, that's Highway 20. And then we've got Highway 85. Oops, I got to click this back to the cursor. Bear with me. So we've got Highway 85 right here, and this is going to lead up into uh, Duke Field and Crestview. Uh, so if you guys are military, those are two of our bases. Eglin Air Force Base and Duke Field um, are, are both right outside of Niceville. Now, it is a little bit of a trek to get up here to Duke Field to drive to Crestview. It takes about 20 minutes uh, from Niceville, maybe a little bit more depending on traffic, and traffic can definitely uh, hit. So um, there's that. And then another way you can get out of Niceville is, of course, coming all the way around here. Let me get my my pen again. Uh, if you wanted to go into Fort Walton Beach, this is the route that you would take. Uh, kind of go up and around. And here is the airport. Um, I'll, I mean, that's really it for the airport. I was going to talk about that a little bit later, but there's not much else to say. It is right outside of Niceville. In fact, it's kind of funny. We joke all the time here that our airport is called Destin Fort Walton Beach. But when you actually look at it, it is closer to Niceville than anything. Fort Walton Beach is way down here. Um, you got Shalimar, which is technically a subset of Fort Walton Beach. But Niceville and Valparaiso, Valparaiso being a subset of Niceville, is literally right next to the Airport. So the fact they call it Destin Fort Walton is purely, I think, a play on the cities that are a little bit more well known. Most people know Destin as a vacation spot. So, okay, those are the big ones there. And then we've got 293, which is uh, we we call it the Mid Bay Bridge here. Um, it's a toll bridge, so it does cost four dollars each way that you go in and out of this. But a lot of people that work in Destin um, use this toll bridge every single day. You can actually get a little bit cheaper than that if you get a Sun Pass and you'll just drive right through. It'll take a picture of it. Just charge your card every single month, depending on how many times you drove. So that's your, That's just to kind of get your bearings now. So let's go ahead and zoom in and start breaking down Niceville and showcasing basically everything, um, everything that Niceville has to offer. So I'd like to start with the water. Um, we have lots of different water all around Niceville, as you can see here. A lot of people don't uh, don't understand the water. I didn't understand the different types of water and things like that. I'm not going to go into like hyper details on what a bayou is and a bay and things like that. But I do want to talk about. Uh, some of these main sections here, because when you become a nice villain or whatever they call a nice villain, I don't, I, I don't know what a Niceville person is called, a resident of Niceville. You're, you're going to get to know these phrases, and if you don't know what they're talking about, you're going to be lost in conversation. So let me zoom in on Niceville here. Sorry about my computers being a little bit slow. So the big one is Rocky Bayou here. Let me get my disappearing pen. So this is Rocky Bayou. Um, a lot of the houses here um, in this area are on the water here. And then, of course, if you're in South Niceville over here in what, what they call Hattie's Grove, um, for purposes of this video, we're going to call it South Niceville because Hattie's Grove is technically just a small portion of it. Um, a lot of them are on the water that are on this side. That's why you'll see a lot of um, you know higher priced homes right here on the water. And then if we zoom in here, uh, if I can get my cursor back. 
We've got uh, Boggy Bayou here, um, which we'll talk a little bit about the Boggy Bayou Mullet Festival later. Um, it's one of my favorite festivals. It's so cool. And uh, you can kind of see a couple of other bayous here. Tom's Bayou. You've got uh, these right here is Shirk Bayou. And so there's just different types of body of water and they all lead here into the bay. That's the main point that I'm trying to make. And the bay is uh, protected by this body of land here. So the water is a lot more calm. It's not like the Gulf of Mexico that maybe you're used to if you've come, came down here to visit or if you've seen photos or anything. I'm sure we're panning different, uh, different stuff on the video right now, but um, the bay is going to be a lot more calm and there's different things in the bay than there will be in the gulf of mexico it's um you know the water's a little less brackish and it's just a little bit different here so this is when i'm talking about the bay this is what i'm talking about this big 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 water mass right here now only a part of it niceville has to deal with which is just about right here right but if you did want to get on the water uh, niceville is a great place for that because you'll be right here on the bay which means when hurricanes come through there is a little bit less of it in opportunity or a chance that the hurricane is going to blow your boat away. Um, now you're still on the water. There is still a big chance of that, but you, it is going to hit land first, which is going to soften that blow a little bit. So if you guys are worried about hurricanes, I know a lot of people that call us, they are worried. Just remember guys, we, um, we get like a week's notice, sometimes even more that a hurricane's starting to brew. And we generally know within a couple of days when it's actually going, if it's going to actually hit us, occasionally it takes a turn or something like that, but it's pretty rare. So I wouldn't worry about that too much, but if you are, you can always call us and we can talk you through it and figure out if it's a right move for you. So that's uh, that's all the different water there. Um, we do have several marinas and stuff all around here. Um, I'll try to point them out in this video whenever we, uh, we we get to those points, but there's there's a couple of them. So it's, it's a little bit hard to do. So that's all of the water stuff. The next thing I want to talk about, I've kind of touched on already is Eglin Air Force Base over here. Um, this is a very heavy military population that lives here in Niceville and Fort Walton because Eglin is right here. Eglin is the largest landmass uh, base in the country. Um, so not by people count, but by landmass. So all of this green that you're seeing for as long as the eye can see, most of that goes to Eglin Air Force Base. Not all of it. Some of it is like right here, Yellow River Wildlife Management Area. So there are some wildlife areas. There are some state parks, especially when you get a little bit more north. But Eglin does own a huge chunk of land. Um, so if you are prior military, maybe you're retiring or you're getting orders here, you're going to feel right at home in Niceville and Fort Walton. Those are two very popular spots. A lot of people that live there also go up to Crestview, but this is a Niceville video. So that's all we're going to be talking about right now. And I am pulling this video right from our MLS uh, so that we can actually show you some of the homes and stuff uh, that will be for sale. So stick around for that. Uh, you don't want to miss that portion, uh, but just bear with me as I'm kind of setting everything up. So when we're looking at Niceville, Niceville is broken down into a couple of different areas. You've got Niceville, and then you've got Valparaiso, which as I mentioned before, is just a subset. Now, Valparaiso is really small because when they planted Eglin Air Force Base out here, they took a big chunk of it. You can kind of see the, the uh, runways right here. We have several different runways that they have. That's also the uh, Destin Fort Walton Beach Airport. They share runways. And then Valparaiso is just this small chunk right here. Um, and it goes north just a little bit as well. I think technically this part is part of Valparaiso, but the lines are a little bit blurred. So let me go back to this map in uh, this format here, zoom out just a little bit. And that's uh, that's Valparaiso. And then we've got Niceville, which sort of covers, um, you know, I mean, if we're including uh, Valparaiso, as I kind of mentioned here, it'll look something like this. Okay. So let's start breaking this down. First, we've got North Niceville. Um, so it's kind of this area here, basically East College Boulevard. I'm actually going to switch this to a normal pen so I can kind of keep this up as we're talking about it. So all of this is considered North Niceville. And uh, there's a little bit just north of this, but for the most part, this is North Niceville. Um, north Niceville is going to have um, neighborhoods like Eagles Landing, which is a smaller one. We've got Deer Moss Creek, which is hidden over here. Um, Deer Moss Creek is a, a master plan community. One of my, um, well, it used to be one of my favorites. I'm not going to lie. I went over there to do a video one time. They actually, they lawyered up and told us to take it down. So I've got a little bit of a, a little bit standoffish with Deer Moss Creek right now, but there's some outstanding builders in there, builders that I know personally uh, that I've worked with in the past, good friends of mine that build out there as well. And they build beautiful, beautiful homes, but your price is going to be a lot higher. I'll show you that here in just a second. 
Then we've got Rocky Bayou Country Club Estates, which uh, actually this will be easier if I just kind of show you guys. Let me pull this up. And uh, oh, that stays on there. I did not know that. So let's go ahead and erase this bad boy. And let's look at some of these uh, some of these houses here. Um, so let's start with Eagles Landing. Let's go to our list here. Any second. All right. Okay. So Eagles Landing right now um, has some new construction. They're sitting at about six hundred thousand. Okay. Don't worry. Not all of Niceville is that expensive. You can actually get in Niceville uh, underneath two hundred thousand. It'll just be very very difficult on what you find. You're probably not going to find too many single family homes in that price point. But I'll go over that in a second. But Eagles Landing is a newer subdivision um, that's getting built out right now. It's just right here on the north side. You can kind of zoom in. You can kind of see this little area here, and that's where it's at. We've got a few properties here. I'm going to quickly go through some of these photos so that you guys kind of see what this is about. And I got to erase this little blue part completely. Forgot about it. Uh, so this is a new build here. Um, again, super quick on the photos. I'm just going to kind of go through here. In fact, uh, hopefully we can pop some of these up on the screen. Um, very, very beautiful home, uh, two story, which you don't see, you know, a ton in here. That's really all I'm going to show on that. I'm not going to go too far into it. If you guys would like any of these lists, if you'd like a list of properties, just reach out to us. You can even shoot us a text if you're not ready to talk or anything like that and be like, hey, you know, I saw this video. Can you guys send me everything that's for sale in Niceville so I could just take a look and we won't bug you too much on that. So uh, that's Eagles Landing there. Um, we also talked about um, Deer Moss Creek. Um, so there's a bunch of properties here in Deer Moss Creek. I'm just clicking on a random one. Actually, let's see if I can find one that I know uh, that I've seen because we just did a Deer Moss Creek home. I don't see it on here. So I'm just kind of picking a random one here. Um, when we're looking at Deer Moss Creek, these are the kind of prices you are going to be looking at. This is a master plan community. Okay. So this is going to be way different than most standard neighborhoods. Master plan community means they thought the whole thing through. This thing, the last time that I looked, it was in either four or five phases. We're just entering into phase two and maybe even into phase three right now. So it's just kind of getting built up. It's going to have everything. It's going to be completely inclusive um, where you don't need to leave if you don't want to. So you're going to have your grocery shopping there. You're going to have different shopping centers and stuff as well. A single family homes, apartments, condos, things like that. But let's go ahead and take a look real quick into um, these photos just to give you an idea of what this is one of the um, kind of smaller ones in the second section. When I say smaller, I just mean smaller in comparison to some of the other um, some of the other properties. This one's actually 2,206 square feet. So not that small. I kind of spoke too soon on that. You can kind of see some of the touches and stuff that they do. Deer Moss Creek is very particular on the type of builder that they put in here. So you can kind of see a, a few different examples. Again, if you guys want to see, oh, this is one of the gazebos. It's actually really cool. They put that in there. So this is like what Deer Moss Creek is all about. It's very aesthetically pleasing. It's uh, it's very cool. So when we look in the map here and kind of see where it's at, this is phase one. Uh, let me go back to my little drawing. This is phase one right here. And then uh, they started building up to phase two, um, which is kind of this section. And it's just going to continue, you know, and kind of um, build out over time since they've got all of this land here to do. So um, that's, uh, that's Deer Moss Creek right here. Uh, let me zoom out so you guys kind of get your bearings again. So it's on the very far um, right side or east side, if you will, on the north side as well. So northeast. Then we've got uh, Rocky Bayou Country Club Estates. Let's go back to our list here. And oh, Swift Creek is here too. Let me... Uh, so this is a three and a half million dollar one. I picked a great one right here on the water, but this is the Rocky Bayou area, um, just just by um, Deer Moss Creek. Um, and it, again, it's kind of a pricier area as you can see here. This is three and a half million, but you can see some of the other ones here at six sixty. Um, so you can get in here a little bit more affordably, but in this particular instance, it just happens to be on the water. So I'm not going to bother showing you guys this again, um, as I'm probably going to say three more times in this video. If you want list, just let us know. So the next one that I'm going to pull up here is Swift Creek. So you can kind of see here on the map, this little star, that's one of the homes uh, that, we're, that we're on. This is kind of the Swift Creek area. So let's go ahead and take a look at these. This is a more expensive area. They uh, were kind of building in like the 2000 uh, timeframe, uh, generally bigger homes and considerably more expensive than most of Niceville, but beautiful, beautiful homes. As you can see here, we've got one at 1.15 million, 1 million, 1 million, you know, 1.18 million, so on and so forth. Um, and I'll just click on this one just because I'm actually more curious than anything. I'm going to show you a couple of pictures of this three-car garage. Got a cool little video we can send you guys as well. Um, 
And this is kind of what you're getting here. Now, this is a bigger home. I think it said it was like 2000, oh, no, 4528. This is a big, big home for our area. And it's only a four bed, four bath. I say only, meaning that is a lot of square footage for four beds. So there's there's a lot of extra stuff there, which is super cool. So that those are kind of the main neighborhoods that I want to talk about here when we're talking about North, um, North Niceville here. Um, So that's all of this area. And that's where you're going to find a good chunk of kind of higher priced homes. But then Niceville kind of has that scattered everywhere. So that's not going to be the only spot. So let's go into the next area, which is South, um, as a lot of people call Hattie's Grove. There are a lot of little tiny neighborhoods in here. So I'm not going to go through each individual one as uh, as I did before, um, because there's just a ton of little tucked away neighborhoods. There's one right here. There's one right here. There's one right here. There's one over here. There's new construction over here. Like So it's kind of a lot to go into. But when we're looking in the South portion, I can give you an idea and uh, an idea on pricing in general. And I'm going to go back and look at the other pricing too. So just bear with me a second on that. Let's go back to this. So we added our search here and just go into Niceville North. Let's do that pricing really quick, um, just while it's on my brain here. So if you want to live in that Niceville North area, you're looking at prices from 139,000. Now this is it needs to, probably needs to be demoed. You got some condos at 180,000 at the Oaks. This is a um, uh, it overlooks a nine hole golf course. Uh, nice little um, nice little area here. Um, and let's see. So and then that's kind of the lower end. You want to start getting into the houses, the townhomes at 330. Houses start at about 350 and work their way up from there. So it is it is affordable. You can get in there depending on what your budget is. And then of course it's topping out right now for active listings at 3.5 million. I'm confident that if I went back to the sold, it's going to be even higher than that. Uh, but these are just actively on the market right now. So to give you an idea of Niceville South, again, this whole Hattie's Grove area that should be populating right now. There we go. All right. So same thing here, starting at 150, um, you start getting in at about 250,000 for some of the condos. And then the houses started around 300 currently. Now I'm shooting this in March of 2024. Um, so of course, these prices are going to change over time. If you're watching this a year from now, they're likely change. So, but you're looking at about 300,000 up to, you know, around 200 or 2 million. Um, and again, there are probably sold properties that are above that and even below that as well. So if you're outside of the main window, you may just have to sit and wait for something to pop up and then be ready, um, be Johnny on the spot, if you will, to jump into that. Um, so that's South Niceville. I was going to go into Magnolia Woods a little bit. That's a cool little neighborhood I like in South Niceville, uh, but I'm not going to go ahead and touch on that. Now, the next one I do want to touch on is probably one of the most popular areas that we have because it's where the bulk of people that aren't looking for a very expensive home go, but they're also looking for really, really good community. We've done a bunch of videos on Niceville. In fact, at the end of this video, we will put a Niceville playlist up as well. So you can click on that right at the end. And uh, if I remember, I'll say it again at the end and and um, you can look through everything in Niceville. But let's go ahead and look to see what Blue Water Bay looks like. So Blue Water Bay is this area down here, whenever it populates. Go to my little pen here. So it's kind of like this area right here. Um, so it is on the southeast uh, side of Niceville, right next to the Mid Bay Bridge. So if you are commuting into Destin, this is a great spot for you. It's also very good because of its sense of community in general. So it's got tennis courts and lots of walking paths. It's own golf course. I'll talk about golf courses at the end of the video as well. I think that's one of the last things I'm talking about other than like notable things we need to talk about. Uh, it's got Fred Gannon, Rocky Bayou State Park, which again, we'll talk about here in a minute. So a lot of really cool things here. You kind of see here on the satellite, it's it's densely uh, populated and you'll have a little bit of everything in this area. So whether you're looking for a, a condo, like over here, these little green dots that you're seeing, sorry, I need to put my pen back up. These little green dots that you're seeing right here um, are probably condos that at one of the marinas. Um, they've got a cool little restaurant down there too. Uh, but that's not that's not the point. So you got lots of different areas here that you can live in. And there's a ton of smaller neighborhoods tucked inside of here. So depending on what you want, there's all kinds here. There's a you know, several gated communities here. There's golf course communities. There's just, you know, hey, we're just living here communities. We're not looking for any of the extra stuff. Um, but the entire community is very alive and it's a very popular area because of that. 
Let's go back here and let's look at some of these prices here. Oops, I keep meaning to go to list. I keep clicking the other button. So we've got uh, from 190,000, uh, this it says an apartment. So, oh, this is at the Florida Club. Um, so, condo here, houses, uh, this actually looks like townhomes starting at 239. We got some more at the Florida Club here, uh, more at the Florida Club, and then more condos. Let me get to a house. I'm trying to find a house for you guys. We got another one, Marina Cove Village. So, this is right by the arena. Uh, uh, marina, rather, you can kind of see the photo here. Uh, let's see. Here we go. So, house starting at about three hundred and fifty-five thousand. It's a four-bed, two-bath, twelve hundred and ninety-five square feet, built in nineteen eighty-seven, two-car garage, and then it kind of scales all the way up to about a million. So, as you can see, as we're looking at some of the other neighborhoods, six hundred, seven hundred thousand is where they're generally starting with some of those fancy neighborhoods up in the north of Niceville. Here in Blue Water Bay, it is a little bit more realistic for a lot of people. I'm not saying it's you know too high or too low or what have you. For some people, it's going to be too expensive. For others, it's going to be uh, perfect. So uh, that is Blue Water Bay in of itself. Like I said, they've got, um, I know they've got really, they're really big on tennis there. Uh, pickleball is now becoming like this whole huge craze thing. In fact, they just started building in our last Niceville video or last Blue Water video, actually, which we'll link right up here in the cards. If you want to click on that and pause that while you finish this or what have you, you'll have that. Or of course, you can wait for the playlist at the end. Uh, but they're putting up brand new pickleball courts now. They've got lots of pools. I can't even tell you how many pools Blue Water Bay has as like community pools. Some of the little neighborhoods have their own. Blue Water Bay itself has several. Um, so they've got a lot of really cool things for you to, to go and enjoy. And of course, a beautiful golf course as well that I've got a little bone to pick with because I was shooting footage for this channel out there when time and I got a drone stuck up in a tree. I didn't come back to me for like two years. Somebody found it like two years later after the wind knocked it down. So that golf course is on my uh, on my naughty list right now. But that is um, that is Blue Water Bay in kind of a nutshell there. Well, let me go to kind of an average home here. I don't even know if this is average. I just picked on a random one. Uh, 723 Presswick. Um, let's pick another one here. I didn't like the color of that one. All right, so a little two story here. This one's kind of interesting. We don't we don't have a ton of two stories. We do have a good amount, but it's not the norm here in Florida because heat rises. It's a little bit harder to heat and cool. Uh, so you can kind of see what these average homes look like. I mean, this is five hundred thousand, so it's a little bit outside a first time home buyer range uh, for you know what is average for a first time home buyer. Of course, some people you know their first home will be five hundred thousand. Uh, it's all situation dependent for them. So you can kind of see some of these differences here. Uh, very cool little house, little cool extra little spaces there. So that is uh, Blue Water Bay. There's a couple other things that I'd like to talk to you guys about here. Okay, so we should have some footage of some of the other things that we're going to be going over with, but I'm also going to put them up on the screen in case I can't find them when we're editing. Uh, this is a Turkey Creek Nature Trail. So we actually just uh, just kind of drove by this in one of our last videos here. If we're looking at the map, where are we at here? So Turkey Creek, you can kind of see Turkey Creek Park here. Um, and you know, the whole little area right here. So this is kind of what it would look like if you're going to be kind of wandering around in the Turkey Creek area. Somebody's got a video for us. It's really nice. Thank you, Mr. Whoever or Mrs. Whoever. Yeah, Michelle Khan. Thank you. It's very nice. Uh, so this is the entry point to go into it. Um, if you watch that video that I'm discussing, this is what we drove through. And then of course you can walk through the park. It's got this beautiful little like river going through it, creeks and other little things. This cool area here that I'm pretty sure you can probably rent out. I don't know that for certain, um, but that's, uh, that's Turkey Creek right there. Let's go ahead and go to uh, Fred Gannon, Fred Gannon State Park. So when we're looking at the map here, uh, let me scroll over, scroll over here. Let me zoom out. It'll be easier if my computer will be nice. So right here, this Fred Gannon State Park, this whole area. So you've got waterfront as well as the whole state park too. You've got these driving paths here. Let's go ahead and take a look at that. See photos. I don't think we have any footage of this. So we, you may have to bear with me with just the photos that we're looking at here. You guys are more than welcome to Google this too and kind of check it out. Oh, another video. Thanks, Discover BD. That's really cool. So this looks like one of the little parks in there. I'm not going to play the whole thing. Um, I don't have rights to that or anything. I don't want to, you know, anybody yelling at me. We've got lots of docks. Beautiful of the water right there. So this is um, now this is actually the bayou here. 
let me see. Um, so it's this area here, the aquatic reserve, but that's very similar to what the water is going to look like on the bay side in general. Now, the bayous are a little bit calmer than the bay because, again, it's further from the Gulf of Mexico, even less water moving. Um, but that, that's very similar to what it is going to look like. So if you guys are kind of curious on what the water is going to be, it's going to feel a little bit more like a lake. It's not going to be, you know, glass like a lake, um, but very, very similar. So you've got lots of walking trails, picnic areas, waterfront areas, a little rest areas that give you lots of great information on the park and things like that. Now, I'm going to go over some kind of random things. Um, so the Maddie Kelly Art Center actually has a whole orchestra that plays here, as well as you'll see, you know, a lot of different other things that are getting played here. Uh, not the best video, but it's very beautiful and it is acoustically outstanding in there. This is the orchestra here. Um, a lot of times they'll have guests up there doing the, you know, orchestra thing. Um, one of the past brokerages that I worked for uh, before I was over here at LPT Realty actually sponsored this. And so a lot of times the agents would go up there and one of my closest friends actually just got to do it. It was really cool to see her do it. So I was really awesome. But so the point here is if you're into the arts, Niceville has it, especially if you're into this kind of thing. Um, I don't generally see like uh, like concerts or stand-up shows or anything like that. This is more like arts, like, like you know, um, that's the best way to say it, but it's really cool. You can kind of see this. You guys can go to their, uh, go to their Google and come listen to this if you would like. I'm not going to put any of the music up here for this video. That is a Maddie Kelly Arts, um, Arts Melly, Maddie Kelly Arts Center. Jeez. And then we already talked about the um, the airport, but I, I did want to hit on that a little bit more. The airport here is... Um, here, let me pull this up. Destin Fort Walton Beach Airport. So um, last year, I don't know what it ranked this year, but last year it was ranked as like the number two fastest growing airport in the state of Florida, not in the country or anything. And, uh, and because they were just adding on to it so much, not that the footprint was getting that much bigger. They did add an extra terminal. Um, but they started adding new lines. Like we have a Legion here, which is really cool. If you're a frequent flyer, first off, this airport's like one of my favorites to go to. Like so, like this one, and then like Lubbock uh, is real small, but that's how this is. It's like a small airport. It's got great deals, lots and lots of flights, lots and lots of options, but it still operates like a small airport. You are getting in super, super quick. So if you are a frequent flyer, you're not going to have to worry about like this big airport. I mean, look at this here. We'll even show this uh, picture of the outside as you're coming in. Oops, I thought that was going to go to a different picture, but it did not. So let's uh, scroll back up here and see what we. We can find. I don't want that. Don't want that. So this is actually kind of cool. You'll see a bunch of fighters and uh, different aircraft planted around this airport because it's sort of their like thank you to the Air Force um, for you know I guess how it, it's it's a very heavy military presence. So I think that's just why. But when we're looking at it, this is actually one of the hallways here. So this is like the main terminal that you're going to go down unless you're flying Allegiant or I think Spirit, and then you're at a different terminal. But this is mostly it. You know, just behind where this photo is being taken. In. There's some escalators, so you're not that far in. There's two floors, but they don't even use the bottom floor. And there's like six, uh, six terminals here. That's it. A couple of bars and a couple of little places to shop. Let me see if I can find a better photo of the outside. Um, this is one of the waiting areas. So again, not super huge. You guys have seen this before. And this is it. Like This is actually kind of busy um, for what it's going to look like most of the time that you visit. Um, it doesn't get super, super busy. Oops, sorry. That was a little bit loud there. Um, these are the escalators uh, I was just talking about. You've got... Uh, there's actually nothing on this other side. So when you come up, you just go that way, right down the lane. This is the bottom floor that they don't use for some reason. But anyway, I'm kind of going off on a random tangent on this airport. The point point here is the airport is close by. It is very easy to get in and out of. You, you, there's just not a lot of issues. The parking is fairly inexpensive. I mean, it's still like 10 bucks a day or something weird like that. Um, so it does add up. And they have carts and stuff that'll come pick you up if you're really far out. You can actually call them and they'll drive out to you and pick you up in a golf cart and bring you in. So that's always really cool. Um, let's see. What else do we want? The golf. Ooh, I got to show you the golf. This is just more for my personal. I like golfing. I'm not good at it. I don't do it all that often. Uh, but when I do, I really enjoy it. And we have several different golf courses here. Let me pull up my tab here. Um, first off, the Eglin course is up here. You can kind of see it in the map that it's showing Eglin golf course. Um, this is one of my favorites. So it, it does belong to Eglin Air Force Base, but you do not have to be a member of the military or affiliated in any way. This is a public course and they have done an 
outstanding job. Uh, Hurlburt Field, which is another air base here in our area, also has one, but you do have to, um, I think, be affiliated with the military for that one because it's on the installation, but this one is not. So let's uh, take a look at some of these pictures here. Um, beautiful, just absolutely gorgeous course. It's one of the few courses in our area that actually have hills um, because, well, we're in Florida after all, so we don't have a lot of elevation change usually. Um, but this is it. Oh, there we go. That's a that's a good photo. Kind of shows you a little bit of everything um, of what you're going to be doing. You can kind of see, you know, a little dog leg right here. You know, I know the lingo, no big deal. Uh, oh, hey, found a little crocodile. You guys are always asking us about uh, about uh, gators and stuff. Um, so yeah, here it is. And I think I just said crocodile, but it's a gator technically. I know some of you guys are like, you know, itching to call me out right now, but, uh, yeah, so there is one in there. Um, and this is actually the, uh, one of the places that I've seen a gator, um, in real life, in real life, unless I was going to go look for them. Cause if you want to go see a gator, you can go look for them and they're really easy to find FUD puckers. One of the big chains around here, they actually have alligators that they're walking around with little baby ones you can pet and stuff like that don't worry they've got their mouth um you know kind of like closed so they're not going to bite you or nothing and it doesn't harm them uh apparently a big snake so sorry that i paused on that for any of you that are a little snake phobia it looks like they're doing some some stuff there you've got these little overhangs in case it rains you can kind of hide out under there very, very beautiful course, uh, despite the fact that it just looks like it's a whole bunch of renovations and stuff, but they do keep up with it really, really well. Uh, let's go to the next one, Rocky Bayou Country Club. Um, I've never been at this one. I don't know how good it is. It, it, it ranks better. Um, and I've been told it's an outstanding course as well, um, but I don't have any knowledge of that myself. So we're just going to have to go and look at these photos. But so far, this looks really beautiful. So that's awesome. Good swing, lady. All right. Yeah, this looks beautiful too. So if you guys go put that down in the comment section down below what you thought of this course. Um, and I got to get out there sometime. Maybe next time I'm out there, I'll bring a camera with me and uh, take some footage on our social media for you. If you guys aren't following us on social, you can find us. I'll throw it all on the screen right here too. But we've got Instagram and, and TikTok and um Facebook and all of that good stuff. And we try to put these little snippets and things like that. And of course, you can follow any of our agents and they do a lot of video as well. But this looks like a great little golf course. And the last golf course to go over uh, is another one I haven't been to, which is a golf at Blue Water Bay. Um, I've heard this one is not as good. It's not as well taken care of, um, but I haven't been out there to actually look for it myself. I think I went to the driving range on this one once. But it doesn't look bad by what I'm looking. It's not not as green as it probably could be uh, for here in Florida, but uh, but it looks all right to me. Okay, a little patchy there, but that's right by the houses. Really not on the course itself. It's apparently got burgers to eat. Uh, so cool little thing here. Um, you can kind of see here on the map. I forgot to show you that that's where the Blue Water Bay one is. It's right smack in the middle of Blue Water Bay and the Rocky Bayou Country Club, um, or sorry, the uh, Ro yeah Rocky Bayou Country Club is right there. You can kind of see that. So they've got some water stuff up there. So I bet there's some cool things there. And then of course, the Eglin one up here. Um, right next to the Eglin golf course as well is the Jackson Guard. So if you'd like to go out on any of the ranges and stuff that uh, Eglin Air Force Base has, um, you can do that. It's like I think $3 per year or something. It's not very expensive. I get one and I actually do a lot of hiking. That's like, I'm actually, as soon as I'm done here, I'm going to strip the shirt off and get in a workout shirt and I'm going to go hiking for a bit. Really cool um, walk in places there. They have uh, biking trails. Uh, if you go to Timber Lake, for instance, which is, oops, I didn't mean to click on that, which is kind of over here in this range. Um, it's more in Fort Walton than it is anything else. I think it's like right over here, somewhere in there. I may be, oh yeah, right here. So where this clay tar target thing is that that is gone now, by the way. Um, but right up here is Timberlake uh, bike trails. So they've got 32 miles of bike trails just right here. And then you can go back a little bit further. Again, you need a pass, but it's like, like I said, like three bucks and they've got all these little pathways you can go to. There's dove fields. There's lots of hunting. There's lots of trail riding. If you want to take your Jeep out, that's what I like doing. You do have to be careful about the hiking because it's not really hiking in that sense. It's, I mean, we're in Florida, so the elevation doesn't change that much. Um, but you get a little bit. So it, it kind of feeds the itch a little bit. If you want to uh, do more hiking and actually get some elevation changes, you do need to go up north a little bit to probably like Blackwater uh, River State Park, and you'll start getting a little bit more of those hills. So that is Niceville in a snapshot. I hope this was really helpful for you guys. If it was, please let me know. And we will start doing every single city here. Just put it in the comment section down below and just say, hey, um, you know, I'd love to see this for Fort Walton. I'd love to see this for Destin, you know, Gulf Breeze, Navarre. 
Bar, Crestview, wh whichever city that you're interested in, let me know in the comment section down below and we'll get that done. And lastly, if you guys are not subscribed, subscribe to us. That's what we're here for. We're here to try to give you information. Yes, we are realtors first. So we are trying to help you buy and sell as well. That is our ultimate goal. But we do really, really, really just want to show you guys the area. We love living here. Um, we love this area. I, I especially do. The military moved me here um, when I was like 20 years old. And when I got out of the military at Oh, shoot, what was I? I guess it was like 18 or 19 when they moved me here. But when I got out at 26, um, I couldn't leave. I just love this place so much. Um, and although Niceville is not the place that I reside uh, personally, I'm actually in Fort Walton Beach. It is a, a very hot area for a lot of people. People really like living here. Um, like I said at the beginning of the video, the schools is a big one, uh, the friendly uh, atmosphere and just the type of people that live here in Niceville. Um, it's very community based. I forgot one more thing before we go. I know I was kind of ending the Bali, the Boggy Bayou Mullet Festival. Um, so they actually call it something else now. Like uh, they changed it from Mullet Festival to something different because what was happening was it's actually about mullet the fish. But as you can imagine, when you name something Boggy Bayou Mullet Festival, people are going to bring mullets. They will either get a wig that is a mullet, and some people even for three months prior to this, we'll start growing out a mullet so they can have it here at the Mullet Festival. Um, so it has changed the name here, but it is an outstanding venue. It's really cool. Um, it's kind of like a uh, like a carnival a little bit on one side, and then you've got a bunch of vendors and drinks. Uh, so you can purchase beer there, which is really odd because it's like, um, I want to say it's like the high school that gives you the beer. Like high school kids are selling you the beer or something. I don't know how they get away with it. And maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it's not actually high school kids and they just all look a little bit younger. Maybe they're from the college, but it felt like to me that they were they were high school kids when I was grabbing beers there the last time I was there. But nonetheless, you've got that section. And then they have a whole venue for concerts. And we've had some big, big names out of these concerts. Um, a lot of them are going to be country, or at least that's what it's been in the past. We've had people like Toby Keith out here. Um, I know he just passed recently. We've had... Uh, oh, man, why is my... So many names are escaping me right now, but a lot of really cool people have shown up and they have some local folks here, like Shenanigans is one of my favorites that's local here. Um, and so they'll sometimes play there. And I, at least I think they've played out there. Don't quote me on that. So don't don't come at me if I'm wrong there, but it'll have some local folks and stuff like that too. And it's done right here in Niceville. It's uh, generally, I think in October, if my memory serves me right. Um, and just a really, really, really good time. It's like eight bucks to get in or something. So it's a great family uh, family. Family fun. So anyway, thanks for watching. Make sure you subscribe and ding that little bell so that you'll be notified every single time we do a new video. See ya.